Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam ala Rasulillah. Alhamdulillah wahidahu wassalatu wassalam ala man la nabiyya ba'dahu sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Rabbi shrahi sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Insha'Allah, this will be the third narration will be written in the book Umdatul Ahkam, the explanation of Umdatul Ahkam. Um, using the explanation of uh, Sheikh Al Ufaymin Rahimahullah. Al Hadith of Thalith, the third narration. An Abdullah bin Amr bin Al As, from Abdullah bin Amr, the son of Amr, the son of Al As, wa Abi Hurayrota, and from Abu Hurayra, known as uh, Abdurrahman bin Sakhr al Dawsi. Of course, we've talked about him in the previous uh, narration. وعائشة رضي الله عنهم أن عائشة دي أم المؤمنين رضي الله عنها رضي الله عنهم may Allah be pleased with all of them أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that definitely the prophet قال he said ويل للأعقاب من النار that woe to the hills from the hell the hellfire now of course um, this may be ambiguous right now but as we move on then the explanation will make it more clearer. Asharhu Aruwat, the narrators. Awalan, the first one, Abdullah bin Amru bin Al As bin Wail al Qurayshi al Sahmi. Abdullah, the son of Amru, the son of Al As, uh, the son of Wail al Qurayshi, he, he was a Quraysh uh, and a Sahmi. Kana Kathir al Ibadah, he used to worship a lot. Hafidhan li ahadith in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, he, he memorized um, and the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Lakin, but Lam Lam takthuri riwaya to anhu But he didn't narrate um, lots of narration, lot of hadith Kama kathurat an Abi Hurayrata radiallahu anhu um, as, Habu, as Abu Hurayrata, he narrated a lot of hadith So, Abdullah bin Amr, he didn't narrate Lot of hadith like Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with both of them. لِأَنَّهُ كَانَ مُنْقَطِعًا لِلْعِبَادَةِ Because he used to devote a lot of time to, to, to ibadah, to, to worshipping. رضي الله عنه اختلف المؤرخون في موته اختلف المؤرخون في موته أين كان ومتى The historians, they actually differ the, uh, as to his death where he died and when he died so the differs to this so um there's no setting actual date and actual place he died وَنُكِلْ عَنِ الْإِمَامِ أَحْمَدَ and it was reported from um the Imam Ahmad rahimahullah anna wafatahu that is death كَانَ سَلَيَالِ الْحَرَّ so layali al الْحَرَّ it, it was a time of fitna um among the Muslims uh, when, when, when they, we can't have time to go deep into this, so we just stick to what the what the uh, mu'allif um, wrote. So it was a time when um, it was a time of difficulty. Nam tayyib. The Hijjah, in the that's is that according to the Hijjah uh, in the sixty third year after Hijra. May Allah be pleased with him. Abu Hurayrata Rudalani was Sabakot Terujamatuhu Phil Hadithi Rokme is name. So we've already talked about um, the short, um, the brief introduction or the brief, um, uh, uh, um, the brief looking into Abu Hurayrata to who he is in the previous um, hadith. Thalithan, uh, the third narrator, Aisha. عائشة أم المؤمنين بنت أبي بكر عبد الله بن عثمان بن عامر القريشي التيمي رضي الله عنها وعن أبيها. So Aisha, the mother of the mother of the faithful believers, this the daughter of Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه بن عثمان بن the son of Uthman بن عامر the son of Amir يعني Uthman the son of Amir القريشي. Abu Bakr of course was also a Quraysh التيمي and from the tribe of Taymi. رضي الله the clan of Taymi رضي الله عنها ما لا بيحس بيتا وعن أبيها and ما لا بيحس بيت بيت أفرا ولدت في الإسلام she was born into Islam she was actually born into Islam meaning أفرا has already accepted Islam 
before she was born. Wa tazawajaha an Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi Makkata ba'da mawti Khadijata. And the Prophet married Ah in Makkah after the death of Khadija radiallahu anha. Wa qabla zawa... وقبل زواجه بسودة and before the prophet married سودة so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he married عائشة رضي الله عنها after the death of خديجة and before he married before the prophet married سودة رضي الله عنها وهي ابنة ستين ست ست سنين and uh, and it was um, a girl of um, six years ودخل بها في المدينة وهي ابنة تسع سنين. And uh, the prophet he, he consummated the marriage why uh, in Medina why she was um, why she was nine years old. So actually a lot of people have actually um, especially the 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 non-believers the non-Muslims they've tried to attack Islam and tried to attack the honor of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, stating the fact that he married, um, he married Aisha when she was so young, and they've said a lot of despicable things. While in Yahweh Bilah, they've called our prophets a lot of despicable names like a pedophile and all sorts of names. While in Yahweh Bilah, but of course, like I used to say, we can't go too deep into this. But what I would just say is that for each each period and for each each culture and tribe, they have the certain norms, and during this time. Um, it was considered a normal thing to to marry this early, and it it was not like the prophet forced Aisha. And during that time, girls were more quick to maturing and were more quick to developing. Aisha, at such a young age, was said to have memorized a lot of poetry and was so intelligent. Subhanallah. Toyib. Now. وَتُوفِيَ عَنْهَا وَهِيَ إِبْنَةُ الثَّمَانِ وَهِيَ إِبْنَةُ الثَّمَانِ عَشْرَةَ سَنَةَ And uh, the Prophet died while she was um, 18 years old. صلى الله عليه وسلم ورضي الله عنها وَكَانَتْ عَلَى جَانِبِ كَبِيرٍ مِنَ الْفَضْلِ وَالْعَقْلِ وَالْفَهْمِ وَالْعِلْمِ And when it comes to... When, when it comes to... Um, when it comes to virtue and when it comes to honor, when it comes to being intelligent, when it comes to um, understanding a great deal about the deen, and when it comes to having a lot of knowledge, Aisha anha was at the top. Kola fiha and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet actually said about her, Fadlu Aisha ta'ala nisa'i, the virtue, the honor of Aisha over the other women. Ka fadli thariidi ala sa'iri tu'ami. Is like the virtue and honor and the president Farid takes over the rest of the food. So Farid is an Arabic dish. It's a very wonderful dish. Yeah, actually, I won't uh, eat it. But according to the hadith and how the ulama have explained it, so Farid is um, a very like uh, honorable dish. So, so because um, when you make teshbih like this uh, in Balaga, um, then what you are what you're actually comparing um, um what, what you want to compare to then it must be something very great uh in color statistics so it's like when you say um it's like when you say the man's the man's face is like the moon's light so obviously you know the moon's light the moon's light moon's beam especially Layla to the battery it's very very it's it brightens and without um a touch you can easily find your way during the darkest night. So, yep. وَقَالَ عَطَوْهُ أَنْ عَطَوْهُ said كَانَتْ أَحْسَنَ النَّاسِ رَأْيًا Aisha was the best of the people in terms of her opinion, in terms of the opinion she gave on, on matters. رَأْيًا فِي فِي الْعَامَ in general وَقَالَ أَبُو مُوسَى أَنْ أَبُو مُوسَى رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ said ما أشكل علينا أمر فسألنا عائشة عنه إلا وجدنا عندها فيه علما. There is no matter that becomes ambiguous that that becomes a problem to us, and we ask Aisha about it except we find with our knowledge about it. Subhanallah. Well, um, so 
a lot of the Sahabas they used to go to her when um, for matters of fiqh and matters concerning the deen to ask questions because you know this was uh, a person that actually lived uh, most of her life with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Subhanallah so there are actually some fiqh matters that it was even through Aisha Rudal Anha we get to know um, the solutions to it um, fiqh matters like uh, Goslu and and something like that. ولم تموت حتى نشرت في الأمة علما كثيرا and she didn't die until she spread a lot of knowledge in the ummah in the nation of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم among the Muslims يعني among the Muslims وكانت وفاتها في المدينة and a death happened in المدينة في رمضان in the month of Ramadan سنة ثمان وخمسين in the fifty eighth year after Hijrah رضي الله عنه may Allah be pleased with ah طيب Mawdu'un al-hadith. What is this hadith talking about? What is the topic we're actually treating in this hadith? Bayanu hukm al-taksiri fil-wudu'i. Clarification of the rule when it comes to coming, when it comes to coming short on our wudu. When we come short on our wudu, when we don't perform our wudu, very well. Sharhul kalimat. Explanation of the kalimat. Wailun. What is wailun? Mubtada'un khabaruhu lil-aqab. Wailun, this is actually for the students of knowledge that are studying Arabic. Mubtada'un, Wailun is Mubtada'un, yani the beginning of um, the word that starts, the noun that starts the beginning of the um, sentence. Khabaru lil aqab, and it's khabar, yani the, the news that is given about Wailun is lil aqab, to the hills. Like I said, um, the, the Arabic students will be more concerned with this. Wahiya kalimatun wa'idun wa tahdeedun tayyib. Now, so this is a word of warning and a word of threat, a word of threat. Wakila and it is said, Wadin finari. It is a valley in hell. Wakila and it is also said, Mimana adabun. That it means a punishment. Al aqab jamu akib. So um, it is the plural of akib, the hills. So wahua al arqub. Yani um, the back of the foot. Wa'al and the alif walam lil ahd. Yani it's it's points um toyib. Let me read the rest of the sentence. Fal moradu biha al aqabu lati lam yakmul gosluha fil wad fil wudu'i. So when we say that alif walam lil ahd, it means um um what I'm talking about. Yani, the specificity of what I'm talking about is known to who I'm talking to. For example, if I say, uh, if I say, for example, if I say, what did you, what did you, what did you study, to, what did you study today? I will say, let's say maybe I studied fikihu, then I'll say al-fikihu. I won't say fikihu. I won't just say fikihu. I'll say al-fikihu. That al-fikihu, that alif walam, it's lil ahd. It's, it denotes the fact that the person I'm talking about knows I'm referring to what ma'adatul fiqh. Bima'anahi ma'adatul fiqh. Meaning I studied um, the subject of fiqh. You understand? Because al-fiqh, if I just say al-fiqh, then it can, it can connote a lot of things. It can be um, a lecture on fiqh. It, it can be anything on fiqh. But who I'm talking to already understood the fact that I mean if the fiqh subject so that's what alif wa lam lil ahd mean so what fal murad biha huna so what me, what we mean by al aqab huna here yeah, is al aqab allati lam yakmul ghusluha fil wudu the the hills that their washing has not been completed in wudu in ablution again that's alif wa lam lil ahd it's actually it will concern the arabic students more so yep min an nar from hell i that is narul akhirah that is the 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 naru jahannam yani um, um the one the the one allah we used to punish the disbelievers uh yawm al qiyamah wal jar wal majrur and tayyib so the hatta uh, rahimahullah i love him a lot he, he he pays great attention to 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 literary device and um to 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 the beauty of arabic language so that's why we are in countries Stuff like this. So al jar wal majrur. So jar wal majrur. That is min. That is al jar min. And now that is majrur. Again, the Arabic students who understand this more. The kalimat wail. That is, it is for the word wailun. Yani wo. I an al wailat. That is 
that is uh, what we mean by while it can either be adabun or wadin finnar or threat lil aqab that is it will be for the aqab to the hills min nar from hell uh la min adabin akhir not for any other punishment that is that while this punishment you are talking about is for lil aqab min nar la min adabin akhir not for any other punishment طيب i hope this is understood الشرح الاجمالي Uh, the comprehensive uh, meaning. لما كانت الطهارة من أهم شروط الصلاة. When we understand that uh, and when we know that الطهارة purification is one of the most important preconditions of الصلاة for it to be valid. وكان ال وكان الإخلال بها إخلالا بالصلاة في الواقع. And when we come short on it, when we don't do it very well, it in reality. Ikhlalan, then it in reality we're also coming up on our we're also coming up short on our salah. We actually not even actually performing our salah very well. Feel working in reality. Hadhar al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam min al Ikhlali bi Tuharati, haythu tawaada man akhla bi shayin min adahi min adahi Tuhar. Tayyib. Hadhar al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam min al Ikhlali bi Tuhar. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he warned uh, about not performing uh, purification very well, about coming up short on purification. Haythu Tawa'ada, whereby he 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 mentioned um um the threat, the promise uh to man akhla bi shayin whoever whoever come come up short with something with his purification min adoi from the part he's supposed to be. Well, I'm sorry, from the part he's supposed to um purify. Adai tuharo, the part is supposed to purify. Bi ada bin min al nar with punishment from hell. That is, the person will have the punishment from hell. Allah dalek al adwi. Um, um, on that part, he failed to purify very well. Haythu yakulu alayhi salatu wasalam, whereby the prophet said, Wai lun lil aqab bin min al nar. We've already translated this. Woe to the hills from hell, from the hellfire. Wahusul al wahusul aqab bi dalek. And he specifically mentioned the hills, لأنها كانت محل تكسير في 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 القد في القدية التي قال فيها النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام ذلك القول. Because the Aqab, the hills, it is a place where people come up short a lot when it comes to purifying it. In this um in this certain issue, in this certain problem, that's why the Prophet um um actually specified the Aqab. So it doesn't mean that. Uh, we can just take any or any of the other parts with uh, levity and, for example, oh, so the prophet said, "While only la akob," that means if I don't wash my face very well, then I don't have punishment from the, um, from hellfire. No, we have to wash every place we're supposed to worship very well. For why you do the hadith? The benefits of the hadith. Awalan, the first, would you be istiabi adoil would do ibi tapohir. The obligation of making sure every part that's supposed to be washed and purified when performing wudu is properly purified and washed and um, um, water reach every place it's supposed to reach. Thanian, the the second. Al wa'idu ala man akhla bi shayin min dalik. So um, a, a warning, a threat for whoever uh, come up short uh, with any of the parts. Uh, we talked about any of the parts that's supposed to be purified during we do. Thales and the third, and the taxir of shayin that anytime we come up short on something, min adoi tohara on the places we're supposed to purify, yotabaru kebi rotan min kaba iri dunub. It is seen as a big sin from the biggest of sins. Subhanallah. Rabian, the fourth, and the gosla. And the Muslim rejoin that definitely the um, that verily the washing of the two feet fil wudu'i and during ablution wajibun it is obligatory. Ida ka nata makshu fatain when it is when the two feet are not covered with socks or any of the foot coverings that may warrant you that may permit you to do wiping. Yani masho. Uh, uh, this is actually a mistake. It's supposed to be khamisan, not. Sadisan. If battle, uh, if if battle is Jazai, um, the the 
the battle jazai al al amal um um the 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 emphasis the emphasis and the the surety of reward on the deeds wa anna al jazaa and the definitely reward, the reward min jis min jins al amal so it is from the um it is from the types of um how can i say it it is it is from the parts um of the deed yani it is it is interconnected very good it is interconnected so any deed you come forth with then you must definitely have what as long as it is ibadah so that's why the the scholars they actually say when we talk about amal we mean ibadah when we talk about uh fail or afal we are talking about um non ibadah so it means any deed you come forth with any ibadah you must definitely have a reward so it can either be good it, it can either be good reward or a bad reward طيب سبب الحديث what's what's what um what caused this hadith what caused the prophet to say this for the way at abdullah bin amru um in the narration of abdullah bin amru you know um there are actually three narrators so the author actually put the three together because the hadith is the same wording but each each narrator actually narrated mustaqilla independently so in the riwayah in the narration of the abdullah abdullah bin amru uh, bin al as don't forget annahum kanu ma'a an-nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they were with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi safarin on a journey fa taqaddamu fa adrakahum nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam um so they actually proceed forth and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he met them later wa qad adrakathum salatul asr and um salatul asr has actually entered فَجَعَلُوا يَتَوَدَّعُونَ وَيَمْسَحُونَ عَلَى أَرْجُلِهِمْ so they started performing wudu and they were wiping over their feet فَنَادَى عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ so the prophet he called out بِعَلَى صَوْتِهِ يَقُولُ in the يعني in in high pitch يعني he was shouting at the top of his voice صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول saying وَيْلٌ لِلْعَاقَبِ مِنَ النَّارِ because the prophet saw them and he noticed they were just wiping they were not washing the foot they, they were not washing their feet very well so he was saying why do they allow god be in the nerve more rotten of falafan they said he actually say he said he actually said it two times or three times wa amma sababuhu fi hadith abi huraira you know we actually said there are there are there are three narrations different narrations but the hadith is the same thing but um the sabab the cause of the hadith is uh, actually different so in the narration of Abu Hurairo it has another cause fa huwa kama fi sahih muslim yani it is as it was reported in sahih muslim anna nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam that verily the prophet ra'a rajulan he saw a man lam yaksil akibayhi he hasn't washed his two feet fa qala alayhi salatu wasallam so the prophet said why lun lil aqabi min an nar that woe to the hills from hellfire yani the man hasn't washed his um his heels sorry not feet the man hasn't washed his heels very well so the prophet said why lun laqabi min an and then the man uh, had to perform um the ablution again wa salatu wasallam ala rasulillah wallahu a'lam subhanak allahumma bihamdik اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته